Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin that the one closest to me on the day of judgment will be the one who has recited the most durud upon me in the world. So let's recite together. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And peace and blessings upon his noble messenger of Aqwa Mawla Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his Ahli Bayt and upon all his companions inshallah and upon them who follow them till the day of judgment with regards to those who observe the night of bara'a the night of salvation and they are forgiven except for three people three kinds of people and one of those kinds of people are very unfortunate people who do black magic Everyone will be forgiven who has Iman and who has devoted himself in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this auspicious night. Except for three people. Those who indulge in black magic, doing harm to others. Number second, those who haven't read the Kalima of course. And then those who have malice and hatred and jealousy. Allah. So let's talk about this fact. Many of us may not be indulging in black magic and alhamdulillah we all, we all are Muslim, we read the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. But there is something we as the common society, we as the ummah, we as the people in this society, as a human being, many of us may be guilty of this evil trait of envy and jealousy and malice and hatred. Yes or not? You see people with this trait walking left, right and center. We have this kind of people in our homes, in our families, in the circle of our friends, people we associate with, the business associates, the customers, the business people. It is everywhere. Allah Akbar. And we don't really pay attention to it. And this is a spiritual disease because of which our du'as are not accepted. Imagine you rubbing your forehead the whole night in the night of salvation in Shabi Barat and you're making du'a, you're crying but your du'as are not accepted. Cold water is thrown over all your actions that you did because of this one thing that we, we might be guilty of. We have hatred, we have malice, we have jealousy towards one another. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, you know, it is directly related to the heart. This is the disease of the heart. And about the heart, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says in his Mubarak hadith, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudgha. Indeed, there is a piece of flesh in our body. When it functions properly, the entire body functions properly. Waiza fasadak, fasad al jasadu kulhu. When it dysfunctions, the entire body is dysfunctional. Allah wa hiya al-qalb. Beware that it is the heart. It is the heart. Even biologically or scientifically proven. And this fact is not hidden from you. Although you might not be a doctor or an engineer or, or very um, qualified professor of a university for you to understand that the heart is one of the most important organs in the body. It is called the king of organs. It pumps blood which is distributed throughout the whole body. 
So now any problem related to the heart, we take it very seriously. You know, if somebody comes and tells you any, you know, any abrupt news or anything that you may dislike, it's a common statement, hey, don't give me a heart attack. Why? Because this is something so serious. Something so serious, we, we use it in our daily conversations. If the doctor tells you, you've got, you know, you've got this problem, you need to test your bloods, all right, fine. Or you've got, you know, typhoid, fine, no problem. We don't take it so seriously. You've got flu, no problem. The moment you hear, you've got heart problems, Allah Akbar. Your whole world comes crumbling down, like the house of cards. Why? Because this is a serious matter. It relates to the most important organ in your body, which is the heart. So when it comes to the physical condition of the heart, we abstain from fatty foods. We abstain from eating junk food. We take medications, chronic medications to, to alleviate this bad, you know, artery blockage that is there. Triglyceride levels, if we find in our blood has gone too high, we take treatment for it. Or some, some of you may be having vinegar with everything because that also cuts it down. So all these things, we take precautions when anything physically affects the heart. Be it uh, cholesterol levels or any other angina heart, any other diseases that are related to the heart, we take it very seriously. All these are physical ailments, physical illnesses, medical illnesses. What about the spiritual illnesses? What about the spiritual illnesses that our heart goes through, that undergoes, you know, many of our traits that affects it directly? It's spirituality. And it's not only spiritual itself. It begins at that level. But then it becomes a heart hazard. How? Let's say you harbor jealousy and envy for people. You see anybody at home. Already negative feeling is entering your heart and you entertain it, you entertain it. And that is very detrimental to your heart, to your heart, physical heart, as well as spiritual heart. What happens when the blood pressure goes up? Somebody is happy, you can't see them happy. When your blood starts to boil. That is the jealousy there, right there. So it's affecting you physically and spiritually. Allah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from having this evil trait. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa in the Holy Quran in Surah Falaq. وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa to seek Allah's refuge from this evil trait of jealousy. And this is a lesson for us as well. And from the evil of the envious, when he envies me, Allah, the translation of the verse. So this is the evil of the heart from which we need to take refuge in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and need to rectify ourselves, reform ourselves. Anytime any ill feeling, negative feelings we have towards someone, quickly keep it in check. Get rid of it instead of entertaining it and then it becoming a mental issue later on. People nowadays, in olden times or even a couple years later, if you look back, as we are progressing in time, as we are be being more modernized and we are being more materialistic, let's say, the mental issues, people hardly had mental issues in old days, in olden times. Now mental diseases are on a rise, whether it's narcissism, whether it's bipolar, whether it is borderline personality disorders, you know, depression, all of this, it's on a rise. Why? Because we are not keeping our spiritual self in check. And in turn, it becomes a mental problem, then it becomes a physical problem. So it comes back to bite you. In the beginning, you may not realize the seriousness of it. You know, jealousy is like how we say, it's like drinking a poison, a bottle of poison. You're drinking the poison, but you want somebody else to die. Right? 
you are drinking the poison you are poisoning yourself your soul your spiritual self your heart and you are expecting someone else to die makes sense no can we derive any benefit from jealousy hatred malice envy no zero so why do we entertain it this is fringe elements we need to discard it from our lives and do we know it is mentioned in the tafsir of the holy quran the ulama the aima the pious predecessors have mentioned that envy and jealousy was the first crime and the first sin it is a sin it is the first sin that was committed in the heavens and it is the first sin that was committed on this earth so it's the root of many evils the first crime and the first sin that was committed in the heavens was committed by iblis and who was iblis before he became disobedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was teacher of the angels he was a very high ranking angel he was from the jinn fraternity but he was he had a high rank among the angels of allah and then what happened when he was fueled by jealousy his hatred was fueled by the jealousy against the father of mankind sayyidina adam alayhi salam and then he was a curse by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what caused him this disgrace was the jealousy that he had against the nabi of allah sayyidina adam alayhi salam and then the first crime on earth was committed by qabil you know abel and cain qabil he murdered his brother habil for what fueled by his jealousy for his brother allah the first sin that was committed on the face of this earth was again fueled by jealousy and malice and hatred and envy so this is how dangerous it is it is the root of many evils if it can bring such a high ranking iblis to such a low level lowest of the low we curse him every day we curse him in our salah when you read a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim it's a curse upon shaitan and after you read sana you read a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim then you read surah fatiha so you are even cursing him in the state of salah that's how evil he is and the root of his evil was jealousy and envy that can be the lesson for us all his hard work he had worshiped so much but all his hard work all his virtues were burned to ashes when he harbored this evil trait of envy and jealousy against sayyidina adam alayhi salam as the beloved nabi sallallahu alayhi salam says that the jealousy can consume your virtues just as fire consumes the wood the says fire consumes the wood this is how dangerous it is you do all the hard work coming to the masjid praying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua and imagine you yourself then throwing cold water over all of this hard work does it make sense no it doesn't it's like you working the whole day and then at the end your wages are given 100 200 rand whatever it may be and then you take it and go throw it away does it make sense no if it doesn't make sense in monetary sense in 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 the physical sense in the material sense why would why should it make sense in the spiritual sense you now we have you have the logical capability of thinking and rationalizing so why don't we ponder over these things that are affecting our iman we all make dua we tell each other to make dua for us but do we know that there are three factors due to which our duas are not answered you can make dua all day and night if you have, if you are doing these three things our duas are not answered it has been narrated that the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said qala al mu'minu yaghbitu wal munafiq yahsud about the difference between aspiration and envy it is a different thing if you aspire you see a pious person you aspire to become pious subhanallah this is 
the characteristic of a believer. If you see somebody knowledgeable, mashallah, you want to become like him, you aspire to become an Ali Medin, subhanallah. This is good. So this is the characteristic of a believer. A believer aspires. Whereas a monafik, a hypocrite, he envies Allah. This is the characteristic of a monafik. And the Holy Quran says about those monafiks, those who are hypocrite, they will be in the lowest state of hell, lowest place in hell. That is reserved for them. Do we want to adopt their characteristic? No, a sane minded person wouldn't do that. You know, and as it is the hadith of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the dua of three people are not accepted. The first person, the one who consumes haram. You eat halal, inshallah, your du'as will be accepted. Second person whose du'as are not accepted is that who backbites a lot. Carrying tales, you know, putting fire between two people. If you are guilty of doing that, when you're making du'a, you can be rest assured, you can do all what you want, but none of it will ascend and get accepted. And in the third reason due to which our du'as are not accepted, that if you have this against the believers, against the Muslims, hatred, jealousy, then again, your du'as are not accepted. These are the warnings from the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That if we are guilty of that, our du'as are not accepted. We all make dua. We love making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the use of all that? We know that because of our own doing, if you entertain envy, hatred, jealousy towards one another, how can our du'as be accepted? You know, you want to invite some uh, guests, Allah Akbar. You know, there's so much of provision made. You know, you do house cleaning, you you neaten up everything, you know, the kitchen is clean, your dining room, everything is neat and, you know, prim and proper. When it comes to invoking the mercy of Allah with the dirty heart, we don't do nothing to cleanse it. We don't make zikr on time. We don't read salah, all the things that can cleanse our hearts. We keep putting in more and more hatred, more and more jealousy, more envy, and then we expect the miracle to happen. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend there. Doesn't make sense. Physical diseases of the heart, we are very much concerned. But the spiritual diseases that affect the heart, we are not concerned about. We keep our houses clean, when it comes to cleaning our heart, we're not bothered about it. And when something goes wrong, then we sit and cry. This is the attitude we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ability to make sincere tawbah in his court, inshallah azza wa jal. This is the remedy. And ask Allah for help because no psychologist can help you here. You know, there are certain um, mental illnesses, diseases, where you go to a psychiatrist, where you go to a psychologist, and they can help you through therapy and everything. But jealousy is something no psychologist can help you. Jealousy is something no neurosurgeon can operate on your brain and take it out. This is only in the qudrat and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you truly, sincerely, if you repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah azza wa jal, we'll see the barakah of it. And we ourselves should strive because it doesn't mean, you know, you're not delegating a task to Allah now. You know, you try your best and then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Inshallah. It can be done. Many things of our fate are decided who's going to get how much risk and who's are going to live for how long, whose soul will be captured in the next calendar year, all of that is decided within this night of salvation. And if 
we want to make dua for longer lifespan. Alhamdulillah, this is the practice of our Buzurgan Deen. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal will observe in the six rakats of Nafl Salah in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Maghrib Salah, the Fard Salah of Maghrib, then the Sunnah. Alhamdulillah, after that, inshallah, six rakats of Nafl Salah, which has been passed down to us from our pious predecessors, that they would read the six rakats of Nafl Salah. Alhamdulillah. And in those six rakats, and we read it two rakats each. The first two rakats, we make the niyyat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, niyyat for longer lifespan, inshallah. The second set of two rakats, they, the niyyat can be made for the protection from calamities, inshallah, azza wa jal. And the third two rakats, they, inshallah, the niyyat can be made that oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't make me dependent on anyone else except you, Allah. Don't make us mohtaj of anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive us all and accept our tawbah in his baraka. Amin bijahi nabi lameen. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, well, for you, it's my prayer. May you keep ascending success. Say, oh, well, for you, it's my prayer. May you keep ascending success.